that we may celebrate all homecomings. Let's connect to our breath. <laughs> Align skull bones over sit bones. Softening the hands, relaxing shoulders. Start to exhale including the low belly muscles. So there's a quality of active, almost guiding the breath to move, then letting the body press the air out. One, this will help you retain a, a tallness, a vertical tallness. And two, it'll help us feel more uh, acutely the low belly, the pubic bone area, the hip area. Our pranayama today is each digit receiving both stretch and breath. Really simple. Feel plus breathe. Begin on whatever hand that you like, but keep the palm low, like navel altitude, so that your shoulder can remain down. Spread the hand bones, lightly draw back the littlest digit, and we simply start by breathing, feeling awareness. Uniting are taking them together, are noticing them together, allows us to do different work than either of those alone. Breath plus awareness, or breathing and feeling. Feeling is simply embodied awareness. Right. 
It's awareness that has relevance to our individual personhood. So it's relevant to our thoughts, our feelings, our relative self. We'll go through all the digits we have. So just keep moving to the next hand whenever. Feeling that breath. And sensing co-occur. Staying with that low belly through the exhale. And then we'll switch the cross of our legs, working shoulder shrugs. So we may allow arms to hang down beside us. Inhale into upper back. So again, it's breathing plus feeling your upper back. Now hold that just for a moment. Contract, squeeze the tops of the shoulder blades. So there's yet another layer of feeling. Just helps to draw our attention to that area. Exhale, squeeze that. So feel that. Pull it down. And release when you need to inhale. Feeling breath go right to those squeezed areas, the back of the heart, the shoulder blade. And pause. Squeeze the middle parts of your shoulder blade. Exhaling. Is that squeeze, that contraction to feel deeply, deeply into the back of the heart. Exhale, move that contraction downward. Releasing, inhale. And slightly lower still, squeezing the shoulder blades. So we're at the back of the heart, the bottom of the heart. Exhaling, squeeze to feel, feel the contraction. Exhaling, pulling that down. Okay. When you release the squeeze, deep inhale, we'll go through one more round on our own. It's just three breaths, three squeezes, 
three moments in which we're breathing and sensing the back of the heart. When we release that, let's set up for dolphin. So we'll move on to elbows and knees. So that very same area that we'd been contracting. We'll now get a slightly different input. We have a different sensation profile as we now push our forearms down we really get quite a quite a different motion than contract. Feel what happens in your upper back, your middle, the middle of the back. And on your next exhale, curl toes under. We'll keep the neck really soft. Pressing the knees up, dolphin. And find out over the course of the, let's say, next four or five breaths, if you can sense the, the sensation, the efforts, the, the space, but with less effort, with less internally applied effort. Maybe I'm pressing a hundred percent effort, feeling a millimeter of lift off through the shoulder joints, but maybe I can apply 70% effort and actually get a couple millimeters of float and a little more length through the spine. a little effort to perception negotiation. That's it, Natalia, that's it. Now, sometimes my perception, what I'm feeling in my body will 
open up, it will broaden if I dial back my efforts. And then it's usually then when I discover that, I, I, I feel compelled to ask, well, who was that that needed to effort so verily? <laughs> and then gently set the knees down. We'll take a rest. Let's lie on back. Do a little elbow to knee. With the feet off the ground, inhale the head and the shoulder blades off ground. And curl tailbone, exhaling, reach the left leg out. Contracting that left sit bones toward the tailbone. Pull low belly down. Inhale, bend left knee. Curl tailbone, exhale the right leg out. Now I'm saying contract the glute. If you need to reach down with your fingertips and feel your right sit bone area muscles engage, do that, use your fingertips. Pull low belly down. Inhale, right knee bent. Curl tailbone, exhale, left leg out. Left glute engages, it's near the sit bone. Pull low belly down, keeping the glute engaged, keeping that leg out reaching. Inhale, bend left knee. Curl tailbone, exhale, right leg reaches. Engage that right sit bone area glute, contract. It's got a quality of almost pulling the sit bone toward the tailbone almost. Pull low belly down. Inhale, bend knee. We'll do three more on each side. And we'll do those on our own, three more. So you're getting the glute to engage, the leg to outreach, and the belly muscles to move down. So it's high activation, you know, muscular activation. Deep sensing, sensing deep, deep, deep into the pelvis and the abdomen. If I'm efforting too hard, sometimes I lessen the depth of my perception. So that notion of right effort may right effort, you know, that Goldilocks amount, start providing us more depth of perception. Sometimes we're increasing our range of perception. Sometimes we can increase our depth of perception. But having a sense of interiors that has range and depth, that's a, that's a really great growth kind of milestone or however we want to call that. It's, it's a good thing. Great. And it looks like we're right about complete. And so if so, let's turn to his side and we'll press up for a uh, twisting horse stance. Get a little twist in here. 
So a nice wide stance. Hands propped up on the thighs. We'll start by twisting to our right. Inhale into the pelvis. And keeping the feet lightly active. Exhale, left hand presses. Chest turns right. And inhaling, we'll come back centrally. Oh, it's okay if the shoulders are shrugging up. There can be some nice effect by letting these, these joints kind of compress and shift up. Exhale, press right hand into right thigh. So we're twisting to our left. And we just keep bringing together, breathing sensing or breathing awareness. Okay. Sometimes we have the awareness, like I'm aware that I'm thinking, but I don't have the breath part. So there's not really a location. It's just kind of I'm anywhere, everywhere. When I have that breath with the awareness, couple of things. One, it usually situates me in my body. So it helps me embody awareness. And two, the breath will give us so much insight into those subtler and broader ranges of feeling, energy, fluidity, the motions and the fullness of this bodily experience. And then inhale, come back centrally, straighten the legs momentarily. We widen out our stance for warrior two. Turn the right foot to the right. Inhale, arms out to the side. Now with exhale, shift, not only the tailbone down, but you're scooching this right sit bone, almost like a little underneath the lap. And sometimes that can ring up some, some snug, snug sensations in that groin area. I will connect to breath because we can bring breath and awareness that kind of overlay that co occurrence. We can bring that right into the tight areas of the body, the solid, the densities of the body. Let's deepen the stance. There's um, a lot of knees that I think are pretty healthy and can bend. Please bend the knee so you can use and access the really deep parts of the hip. There aren't too many occasions to get into the hip like this, so you know I invite you in.
We're going to remain in warrior two. Reach the left hand behind your back and let the right hand help the left hand up the back. So I'm just nudging it up. And there I'll hold my left hand kind of pinned in place. Inhale into back of heart. Exhale, reach that left elbow down. It won't slip because my right hand is, is holding the wrist or the palm, it's holding it put. Some people get a little irked, a little like, they don't like the feeling of when the legs get activated like this. And that's okay. Sometimes I don't like it either. <laughs> but it might be possible to breathe plus feel. So yet another strata, another layer of sensation might be that, that irk or that fire or that, you know, that kind of vinegary, like, I don't like that. You can breathe with that, and you might try that. Good, release. Inhale, let's set the hands down around the right foot. Exhale, step the right foot back. And we'll lower plank to ground. Reach out through those legs. Sometimes a hot leg reaches differently than a cold leg. Dip the tailbone toward the earth. Inhale, hands. Pull, lengthening the torso. Drawing the chest bones forward. Exhale, lower down, downward dog. Now, in downward dog, we'll bend elbows toward the ground, but directly under the shoulder. So you have to enact a arm bone turn. The shoulders wrap. Inhale into the upper back, underneath the shoulder blades in Turbo Dog. Inhale, left foot between hands, Warrior Two. Exhaling, we'll shift the tailbone down and a little bit of that scooch. Like scooching the left sit bone under your lap a little bit. There's a little. It takes a lot of constant leg muscle activation too to stay light and to have that little scooch, that lengthening of the left side of waist. breath and feeling co-occur. So it's not that I'm breathing every now and again and then I kind of touch in and feel like, oh, I, I like that feeling, I don't like that feeling, but I'm bringing breath and feeling together. When I do that, I am somewhere, I am so, I'm located in my body. Right hand reach behind back, half archer. 
the left hand will supply a uh, little pin. I'm just pinning or holding my wrist. My right arm held in place. Inhale. Exhale, reach that right elbow down. Is it possible you're feeling the leg and the elbow together? Yeah, that's possible. Deepen breath. Breath feeling area gradually begets breath feeling whole body. Instead of negotiating the feeling, would we be willing to breathe and feel? So an unnegotiated experience of our body. And release. Inhale, hands to ground around the left foot. Exhale, step back, lowering all the way down. Boat, either grab the bottom of your butt with your fingertips or interlace the hands. Your selection. But engage the inner legs by squeezing. Reach back through the inner legs. Inhale, chest lifts. Exhale, legs reach long. Thigh bones moving away from pelvis. And release. Inhale, hands under chest. Exhale, downward dog. Neck soft. Okay, so we're going to take Archer and Warrior One. Inhale, right foot forward. So now with this two arms involved in Archer, if you like a strap, the right hand can lower it to the left. Or right elbow up, left elbow down. Press outward through the legs and the feet. Inhaling, expanding through the back of the heart. And with a few more breaths, finding out, does that mid-back articulate um, slightly move away from the low back. How about the upper back? Does it start to lift and move away from the mid back? And when we release the hands from Archer, we can set the strap anywhere. Brain cradling. Take both hands to the back of head. You can interlace. I prefer um, just stacking one hand over the other. So I'm underneath the ledge of my skull, the, kind of the occiput. Inhale. Reach both arms up.
breathing into the upper ribs, softening through the neck, and feeling that breath wash all the way into the brain and the crown. I find that in these poses like so, if I want to access or feel breath located in the brain, in the head space, I really need a sense of footing. I really need to be present, utterly present and embodied in my foot to feel breath in my head space. And really, inhale. Once the head's brought over the pelvis, we'll set hands down. And now exhaling chaturanga. So when we step back lower, inhaling upward dog. Tops of feet push the ground. Hands pull chest forward. Exhaling downward dog. Remain in downward dog. And we just did a few little things, a couple little things, to sense more clearly and with more depth into the upper chest, the neck. Bring breath into those same areas. This is the upper back, the tops of the shoulder blades, the very top of the ribs, the top dome of your rib cage, breathing there. Good. Exhaling, use those low belly muscles, drawing the gut back, back like taffy. And take one or two more breaths like so. Inhaling, feeling, locating yourself in your upper ribs. Exhaling with a low belly. They draw back, go for death, not just power. Sometimes our efforts must change to sense more depth or range. Inhale the left foot forward for Archer in Warrior One. Now this is my own kind of editorial, but I, th I believe a lot of individuals who may have initially been attracted to this style of yoga, and if you're using strap left elbow up, right elbow down, have tended to be, or Again, my observation, I could be wrong. Very active um, individuals with a great ability to deliver on effort. And so we have a, a unique kind of hurdle, a, a kind of a unique growth inflection point. So we really have to carefully examine the efforts that we apply in a pose, the efforts that we're applying through our body, does it serve a deeper 
a more whole, a more inclusive perception? Does it broaden our sensing capacities? Do our efforts deepen our sensing capacities? So if you're in your archer, your warrior stance, and you're just gliding along, ho-hum, ho-hum, there's a real beauty in boredom. Boredom lets us know we're in a same spot. We're starting to disengage. Boredom is a beautiful thing to get to know. It lets me know I'm, there's no variance here. And my attention my, is starting to dissipate. So let any of those boredom signals, ho-hum, ho-hum, <laughs> let them inform us. Deep in breath, re-engage. When I'm flatlining, in an experience, when an experience is falling flat to me, it's stayed, it's dry, there's unchanging, there's no novelty, there's no more richness, there's no more fullness, it's upon me. Let's release the archer for brain cradling, hands under the occiput. It's upon me to investigate, well, what am I doing with my attention? How am I breathing? Have my efforts limited my experience? What if I soften my efforts? Does that broaden my experience? Press into those feet, lift to the core, soft lift. And release by helping the head back over the pelvis. Inhale, hands to ground around the left foot. Exhaling, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Tops of feet press. Inner legs engage. Pulling chest forward. Exhaling, downward dog. In these final two breaths, downward dog, can you get a sense of breath reaching the brain? It's okay if the answer is no. If I've already divested myself from that inquiry, Right, if I've already kind of turned it off, like ah, I don't know. Right, that's that's a, a close cousin of boredom. That's you know, I'm turning off my attention. I'm disengaging in the richness and the fullness of this bodily experience, and it's upon me now. When I'm when there's that loss of fullness, how, what 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 are how are my my efforts contributing to that. Well, gently set knees down. 
and we'll be working bridge with a loop and a leg up. So just as a reminder, and you'll want your strap, as I'm kind of showing you through this, I generally like a loop that's about, what is that, a foot, a foot in diameter. And I like doing this without a block, but you may want to also have a block nearby. Okay. So as I'm sitting for bridge, I just slip my right ankle through the loop. It's my right ankle. And let's lie back as we set up for bridge. And again, if you have knee issues or back issues, you might need a block. Inhale, lift the chest toward your nose. Exhale, shift the tailbone toward the sky. The buttock lifts. Now both hands reach under your trunk. Grab the loop, which is around your right ankle. By grabbing the loop, I am snuggling my, my shoulders underneath my trunk. So that is to be expected. Okay. And you may want to remain right here, just lifting and breathing into the uppermost part of chest and brain. I'm going to walk my right foot more centrally, so an inch to my left. Inhale, pick up that left foot, reach it towards sky, lift it towards sky. My head and neck are free. It's my shoulder blade muscles helping me balance here. And inhale, set the left foot down, yet remain in bridge. And we can step the left foot in the loop, step the right foot out of the loop, re-grab, got a deep breath moving again. We've already prepared the hips. There might be some heat. We've already prepared them. We know how to breathe and feel any heat or sensation of the legs. Inhale, let's pick the right foot up. Exhale, reach the right leg towards sky. Breathe and feel, feel the body. Inhale and set that right foot down. Let go of the loop, yet remain in bridge. Now wash your breath through your core. And yes, into your brain. Lower 
your upper back to the ground. You may want to pause as you kind of just wait for that next breath wave. And bringing the mid spine down to the ground. You may want to pause there as you just wait for that breath wave. Now, once you have lowered, draw your left knee into your chest for lying spinal twist. Right leg straight along the ground. Turn onto your right side. Left arm can be reached behind you. Behind you is just relative to how your body is now, so somewhere to your left. Letting the head and the neck relax as you breathe the bones of your spine and the Spinal cord, the dura, the fluid of your spine can wave and undulate all through the, the sacrum to the brain. When we encounter mundane experiences, Lying, <laughs> breathing. It's very enticing to disengage. It's very enticing to give in to that sense of, well, I'm going to find something mentally more stimulating or exciting. I'm going to think about, you know, fill in the blank. If we stay with our breath, we can remain located in our body, sensing plus breathing. There is a richness and a fullness of experience that is unlike any mentalization, any mental stimulation, titillation. And that's really at the heart of the why. Why bother breathing and feeling again and again? We'll turn on to our back. And when we switch sides, I just want to offer one final fine point. Richness and stimulation may not be the same. The fullness and the richness that we feel by breathing, we've got our right leg hugged in, turn to your left side. Is something that we can sense and participate with at any degree of stimulation. So stimulation or excitation doesn't necessarily bring us to that sense of fullness and richness. And there's good news that sense of fullness and richness, we can train ourselves to spot it, to sense it, and to, and to enjoy it and express it. So with our practice, we can have more and more fullness.
All right, inhaling, let's move back to our back. Set your legs up for Shavasana. And as you're lying, this is a special note for anyone that works with brain or neck or head concerns. I'm saying that very generally. You know who you are. If there's a little bit of a pulsing or that beginning of, of throb or pulse or head sensation, start to sense more richly the the hands and the fingertips, the sole of your feet, the soles of your feet. So get richly, richly embodied in the periphery, the hands. So rich that your hands and your feet may even start to warm like that, that rich, so plump, so rich, it's actually warm. And when you're ready, bend knees. Turn to a side. And press to seated. Namaste.